Hello and welcome to The Rock of the Week, the show where dirt scientists and magic crystal users alike can come together and enjoy beautiful minerals. Today we're talking about almandine. It's the most common member of the garnet family, and compared to other garnets, it's a little on the boring side. At least at first glance. So the crystal people watching might recognize garnet as the birthstone for January, and that's why I picked it for this week. The almandine is usually a dark red, sometimes with a bit of brown or orange in it, and sometimes closer to black like this and you can also sometimes get it in a pink. Low quality crystals have a very waxy or resinous surface, but the higher quality ones which are used for cutting and polishing are a lot more glassy or vitreous. You'll usually find almondines in a matrix, which is the host rock that the mineral grows from, and in the case of almondine, it's usually a very flaky rock called schist. Sometimes the crystals get big enough that they detach, and you get little floater crystals like this. But sometimes they don't get big enough, and you'll get crystals growing inside of the host rock, like this one right here. Almondine is also a little bit on the heavy side, weighing in at around a 4 in specific gravity. That means that it's about 4 times heavier than a quantity of water the same shape and size. So like I said, almondine is the most common type of garnet and can actually be found all over the world. Most of these bigger ones I have here come from Ontario, Canada, which is actually where I live, and these smaller ones come from India and Sri Lanka, which is where you get a lot of the pink stuff. You get a really cool variant in Austria, which is called the Zula variety, and another one in Australia, which gets called the Australian Ruby. Now this is a bit misleading because Garnet and Ruby are pretty different. Ruby is a lot harder and forms hexagonal crystals, while Almondine forms these really unique crystals which we'll talk about in a second. But anyway, a huge portion of Garnets actually come from New York, which has the largest Garnet mine in the world. In fact, they found one of the largest Garnets ever under Manhattan, and that got dubbed the Subway Garnet. And let's not forget about South Africa, which is kind of the world hub when it comes to gems. Alright, that's enough of that. Anyway, how did Almondine get its name? So hundreds of years ago, these stones were cut and polished in a town called Alabanda in Turkey. And one day, a guy named Georgius Agricola, who's often considered the father of mineralogy, came by and thought, hmm, Alabanda sounds like a cool name, and he named it after the town of Alabanda in 1546. Sweet home Alabanda. Dun, dun. Oh shoot, that's a good name. Almondine is an iron or ferrous aluminum silicate, and here is the formula for any nerds watching, and here it is for the people who can't read my handwriting. So like I said, it's a silicate, specifically a mesosilicate, which happens when you have a silicon atom surrounded by four oxygen atoms in a tetrahedron like this, which is basically a triangle-based pyramid. And then of course you have the iron and aluminum scattered throughout, which creates a big cubic crystal. Now despite almondine being in the cubic crystal system, it doesn't actually form cubic crystals, as you can see here can form one of two things, either a modified dodecahedron, which looks a bit like this, or a trapezohedral crystal, which has trapezoid faces throughout. And here's a beautiful representation of that drawn by moi. Anyway, garnets are probably best known for being great stones to polish and turn into things like jewelry, but almondine isn't actually the best for this because it's pretty brittle and hard to work with. And the best garnets for this are called pyropes, also known commercially as rhodolite garnets. And that happens when the iron in the formula is replaced with magnesium. And this basically makes the bonds between the molecules a lot stronger and therefore easier to work with. But because almondine is so common, it's sometimes used industrially as an abrasive. And that means that it's turned into things like sandpaper and used to smooth things down. The reason it's so good at this is because it's actually harder than steel. And to demonstrate that, I have a knife. So we're just going to go ahead and give it a good scratch. Oh, can you see that? Yeah, that definitely scratched up. Well, now my knife is all scratched, but you got proof. Anyway, that's enough nerd stuff, let's get on to some fun facts. So first of all, this is the oldest garnet known to humans. Well, not this one, but I mean almondine in general. And it was used as far back as 3500 BC by the ancient Egyptians to make things like jewelry. It's also believed that Noah actually used a finely cut and polished garnet to light up his art during the Great Flood. Now this one isn't exactly cut or polished, but we'll see what it can do. In ancient times, garnets were worn into battle for protection, and it was also believed that garnets could protect children from drowning. Guys, someone help, I'm drowning! Help, I can't breathe! Wait a minute. Garnet, I'm safe! But today, garnets are often used as a symbol of separated love. A garnet might be gifted to someone who is taking a trip away from their lover, and it's said that the garnet will help heal their broken bond until they return. 
Now, a funny story, this one was actually given to me when my wife left me, but she hasn't come back yet. Anyway, that's all I have time for today. I really hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something new. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do next week, and I will see you all then. Happy collecting, everyone.